everyone, Sean Carey with Migration Productions and welcome back to Exploring the Natural World. I am in my vehicle right now, as you can see. And the reason I'm in my vehicle is I'm about to head to Cape Cod all the way out to Race Point to document the release of an Atlantic Puffin that was brought into Wild Care, which is located in East Ham. So I'm actually gonna to go to Wild Care first. The bird is gonna be banded and then the bird's gonna be taken to Race Point and it's gonna be released. It's been in their care for a little while now. And the bird was brought in because it had some sort of an injury of some kind. But apparently the bird is well enough now that it can be released. So I wanna go down and document the release of this Atlantic Puffin. I thought it'd be a nice story for exploring the natural world. So here we go, off to Race Point, off to Cape Cod. Here we go. Care. It's going to be this yellow building here on the right. That's Wild Care. So we are at Wild Care. Okay, so I did make it to Wild Care here in East Ham on the Orleans Rotary. Uh, the Atlantic Puffin is in a barn just off to my right. They've got a couple of small pools down there where they put these alcids when they arrive to rehab them. My friend Anthony Hill, who's a licensed bird bander, drove all the way from Western Mass, had a very long drive, much longer than me. He's the person that's gonna be banding this particular bird. So we're gonna go into the barn, we're gonna take a look at the banding, and afterwards have Anthony explain to us a little bit about what's going on. Uh, just a little background on Anthony, he's been working with Project Puffin and Dr. Stephen Cress up in Maine for many years, so he's a very experienced bird bander and very experienced when it comes to alcids, particularly puffins. So uh, let's head over to the barn and uh, check out what's going on. Here we go. Okay. 
Don't put any pressure on it. Because you need a 140 on the wing. 140. Can you write it down? No, it's all right. Sure. 35. 140 My name is Anthony and I'm here at Wild Care in East Ham where we've just banded an Atlantic puffin. I am a licensed bird bander. I have federal and state of Massachusetts permits to do this. And the reason that we're doing it is because uh, there is a project that National Audubon Society runs in Maine called the Project Puffin, which is a seabird restoration program. And they've been running it up there for 40 years. And there are puffins now breeding on these islands. And by banding a puffin here in Cape Cod Bay, we're thinking that we may be able to find out that some of the island birds from Maine are actually wintering here in Cape Cod Bay. Um, and by banding a bird, we're designating it as an individual bird. Otherwise, you wouldn't know one puffin from the other. You put a, we put a metal band on its leg, which doesn't interfere with its life. It has a unique number that we compare to a social security number, so that if this bird is seen on the islands in Maine, it will be identified and we'll be able to say, well, we know that that bird that was encountered on Cape Cod is now coming up to Maine to breed. And that's one of the things that we don't know about puffins because they spend most of their lives on the open ocean. We don't know where they go except when they're on an island breeding. And we look for ways to try to figure that out. And the project in Maine was started because at the end of the 1800s, all but one pair of puffins had been eliminated from the islands in Maine by human pressure for hunting and things of that kind, and a gentleman named Dr. Steve Kress started a project in about 40 years ago now with the idea that he could return these birds to the nests in the islands where they had formerly bred but had been eliminated by human pressure. This takes advantage of the fact that seabirds have a habit of returning to the islands where they hatched to breed. So he was able to bring young puffins from Newfoundland down and hand raise them on islands in Maine with the idea that they would then take those islands of home as home and come back to breed on them. And in fact that did happen and it's been very successful. The puffin that we banded today in East Ham is likely a very young bird and since puffins don't breed until they're four or five years old it's unlikely that this bird will be seen again for another four years or more because when the young birds try to come ashore on the breeding islands, the adult birds let, it know that, let them know that they're not welcome. So the chances are that it wouldn't have an opportunity to be seen and have its band read for at least another five years. But we're hopeful that that will work and then we'll be able to find out a little bit more about the connection between Cape Cod Bay and the Gulf of Maine where we have um, puffins now breeding the, Gulf, the islands in Maine are the southernmost part of the breeding range for the Atlantic puffin, which extends up through Atlantic Canada and over through Iceland and uh, over into Scandinavia and some of the islands off Scotland. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to have this bird banded down here, and we'll hope that we will hear from it again. And since if that happens, I will get a report since the band number is associated with my permit and I will certainly let everybody at Wildcare know that we have made the connection. So that's what is going to come out of that, okay?
Provincetown. All right. I am off to Race Point now. They just uh, took the bird out of the barn, out of its pool, and they're transporting it off to Race Point. That's where I'm going to go. We're going to watch the bird get released. Okay, here we go. Down the road. Got about a 35, 40 minute drive. Going to be in a, a nice uh, little adventure here and a real good feel good story to get this Atlantic Puffin uh, back home where it belongs. Okay, let's go down the road. Race Point parking lot. My friends with Wild Care are going to release the bird back into the ocean here shortly. Uh, but just want to make a couple points here. Keep in mind, Atlantic puffins are about the size of a pigeon. This is not a large bird. And yet this young bird is going to spend the next three and a half to four years out on the open ocean before it comes back onto land when it's at breeding age. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind. Just let that roll around your head for a little bit. This very small bird is going to spend that much time out on the open ocean before it actually comes back to land. So it's a very hardy bird. Uh, that's where they live. That's where all these alcids live. And this particular puffin now is going to get to go back to the wild where it belongs, which is rather exciting. So uh, let's head on down and continue to document the release of this bird back to the wild. Here we go. I can hear him pittering. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You want me to carry it and you want to go get it? Or do you yeah, I think we might as well have it. I'm going to go get my net just in All right, that's today's adventure. I really enjoyed my time here on Cape Cod, and particularly the fact that I got to come down here to Race Point here in Provincetown and document the release of that Atlantic puffin back into the ocean where it belongs. And a big shout out again to, the, to my friends with Wild Care. They do an absolutely fantastic job. Stephanie Ellis, who's the executive director and her staff, you can't say enough good things about them. I'm gonna leave the link below for Wild Care. I would encourage you to check it out and maybe even consider making a donation to Wild Care. Again, they just do really great work. I hope you enjoyed this particular video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos here on Exploring the Natural World. And as always, remember, please help protect wildlife and help protect wild places. Cheers. Mm -hmm.